And welcome to the first ever episode of Wiffle Weekly. Uh, you know, first official episode, I should say. This is Quentin Platt of the Yard Goats. How you guys doing? The Yard Goats. So today we have a bunch of things. And oh, oh my gosh! Bro! Oh, it's him! It's him! It's, him. it's Ethan Weiner oh, of the Lumber Kings. We gotta get him. Anyways, anyways, anyways. So, today we have a big week of, uh, well, not really a week because we actually have, you know, the entire preseason to recap here on Wiffle Weekly. So, uh... Yeah, let's 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 just start up. You know, start. Uh, first, I want to start off by talking about the uh, most recent game that was posted on YouTube. We had the Jumbo Shrimp and Hooks game. It ended eleven to nothing. The Blue Wahoos shut out the Jumbo Shrimp. Oh, man, what what are your thoughts on Garrett just being a dominant pitcher all season long for the Blue Wahoos, just coming out? You know, I dominant. think the big thing about Garrett is the pitching velocity that he has, and also the good movement on his ball. And I think that's going to be key in a lot of the games they play is because Garrett is a ace-type pitcher. He can last long throughout the games with good solid motion. I think that's going to be able to take him very far into the playoffs. I think it will, too. I mean, that slider is deadly. And, I mean, um, I, I feel like he has a bunch of other pitches in there, too, which, um, you know, we're just waiting to see. But that slider, if he can stick with that, I mean, that's, that does a lot of damage already. I mean, you saw they defeated them in a, they actually played uh, in this preseason. They had two shutouts, one against the Hooks, one against the Blue Wahoos. Um, and it was it was it was a great great game posted or not posted but pitched by Garrett Lambert and um, you know speaking of the game that we are recapping right now um, we're gonna take a look at a clip that um, is gonna be the uh, play of the week right so yeah with a weekly play of the week so and, you can uh, see yeah. Cole Masters here um, hits the ball or looks at the ball behind his head and it actually hits his bat and as you can see here it's actually gonna go into fair play and. Long story short, he's going to get a triple out of it and actually score runs. And that is actually, I believe, the only hit of that game, um, just because of all the walks and hit by pitches. Uh, and that's where we're, we're going to start um, only showing the last pitch of those kind of at-bats, um, just for your guys' sake, to not be bored throughout the game. But another thing you mentioned is about Garrett is his pitching variety. And that's what I think is another big key thing about him, is he has that good slider, and he also has a lot of good pitches that are going to get, catch people off guard. And that's, that's another thing that's going to get him far pitching-wise. <laughs> so uh, now, uh, with, you know, we, we got to talk about this other game that we had on YouTube. Uh, biscuits, hooks, right? So we got, we got the Biscuits. Uh, just absolutely cremated the hooks. 16-5 in two innings. It's another spread. I think every single game this preseason has been a spread, hasn't it? I uh, recall. Yeah, for the most part. Um, Was there one that wasn't? I don't think so, and that's the thing is I think the teams weren't as evenly matched as we thought they were, and the preseason is just kind of a, like a fun, like get to know um, with the ball and get to know the team, and um, just just have fun during the league, and I think that's that's going to change a little bit as we get to the regular season. There's already some stuff boiling up, um, people are getting ready, and people are getting excited. Um, it's going to be a fun season so far. Yeah, I think that, I, I agree with that completely. This is the first, you know first set of games that we have with our new team and we're just kind of seeing how things go with our teams. Um, I mean, with the team being uneven, you know, I guess that's the captain's fault for choosing their players. You know, they, they got to choose their own rosters. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, talking on that Biscuits game, though, uh, Garrick, Garrick Closure, Cloutier, I don't even know how to say it still. But anyways, so uh, he, he came out big with two Grand Slammies. They, they, were, they were moon shots. I mean... Yeah, that's the thing I noticed about him is he likes... Um, pitches that curve from inside to outside, and that's the thing. Um, he hits the ball really well when it go inside from outside. And Tyler Cleese is the exact opposite. He hits the ball well on the inside half. Or, I'm sorry, Tyler hits the ball well on the inside half, where Garrick only hits the ball well on the outside half. And so people, when they notice that, will have to adjust very well to that. Or Tyler's going to start hitting balls hard up the gap um, for doubles and stuff like that on the outside pitch, and Garrick's going to do the same thing. Um, so people definitely... Scott and Porter are going to have to pitch inside on the Biscuits, and they're going to have to play more left side for Tyler and more right side for Garrick. Yeah, for sure. And um, with the hooks, too, I mean, you have, you have um, a solid pitcher, which I would, I would consider that Tate Tolander. You know, he's got a good slider going. And, you know, a lot of break on that pitch. Um, you know, I mean, we still have some, though, on that team. That I, won't, I don't know. I won't name them, but I mean, we've seen the other guy that's been in the video. Anyways, so, you know, he needs to work on, you know, stuff. But, I mean, other than that, you know, it's just – uh, you know, I, I, I see a good future for them, you know, if, if they can get their pitches down. I think, I think the hooks would be, would be fine after that. So, um, now talking about our own, uh, the Yard Goats, right? So, um, yeah. the Yard Goats. 
Uh, so, we don't actually have a game footage for that, but uh, they are 2-0. Uh, run differential of uh, plus 33. Uh, they defeated the Lumber Kings 20-9, and they defeated the... Well, who do we play the first week? Jumbo Shrimp 24-2. to two. So, man, I got to say, what, what are your thoughts on Seth Brown and you know, his arm? So, Seth, we've only seen him uh, one or two games, and really I've only been there for one. So, from what I get from Seth, he's a good hitter, good average, a uh, little bit of power. Um, he gets one over the strike zone, he's going to hit the ball hard, no question about that. And his pitching is elite, um, for our league at least. And I think he's going to do really well and be successful this year um, as a pitcher and a hitter. Uh, I haven't seen his fielding skills yet, but that's not going to be as needed as pitching and hitting. Yeah, he's been on the rubber the whole time pretty much, and you know, he's dominated up there. He has a nasty slider. Um, he, I, I don't remember if it's a knuckle or a knuckle drop, but he's got a good one of those too. And uh, he also, you know, something I do remember is he hit four doms the first game. He had another multi, we had two multi home run games, or you know, for players yeah. at least. So, uh, Garrett had I think a three or a four. We had it on YouTube. Yeah, uh, hooks and hooks and uh, blue wahoos. Check that video out. Yeah, check that video out for sure. And then we had uh, Seth Brown against the Jumbo Shrimp. I mean, I guess I guess he was hitting against Joe Grondo. Seth Seth hit three or four, and I hit three. So yeah. that's an exciting game. I think I only hit one. If if I did, I, I think I might have hit like one that like hit the fence. And I thought I was gonna be gone or something. He had a back issue sure. that week, so. Yeah, but oh well, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how the future goes. I guess for our bats, our bats are doing great. Um, we're working on the pitching, so uh, I'm excited for that too. And um, I think that's gonna be the biggest thing for our team as the yard goats. Is gonna be the pitching because we have one really good pitcher and another really, I guess two really good pitchers, and then the one uh, Quentin Platt is gonna to have to work on his pitching skills a little bit. But um, other than that, I think they're gonna be a really solid team this year. No, I would say we have three solid starting pitchers. I All right, so three solid ones. On to the Lumber Kings. They played the <laughs> Lumber Kings um, second game and. Um, We've only seen them once. They're one and zero, or no, not one another. Oh, one. Sorry, oh, one. I take that back. Because yeah. they lost to the Argos, uh, twenty to nine. Um, sorry, sorry about that. I'm, I'm in Argos. So. Uh, anyway, yeah, they lost. Um, you know, so they're on one, but that's just one game. Uh, you know, they could have made that second appearance, and that you know, they might have been one and one. They might have been on two. We don't know, but um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, their pitching definitely needs a lot of work, but uh, Ethan Wider over here. Ethan Wide. Ethan Wide. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he, so uh, that's quite the arm, but we haven't seen that uh, with a wiffle ball yet. But um, you know, because we actually the yard goats played the Lumber Kings, and I remember Mitchell had a hard time um, finding the strike zone, and uh, so did Bryce, but he also had a little bit of trouble with variety. But you know, that's that's an easy fix there. You know, just something to work on. So yeah, yeah. I think the biggest thing with the wa or the uh, Lumber Kings is that they don't have a lot of experience in wiffle ball, and once they get that experience, they're going to start showing off a lot better than they are now. And I think they're going to be pretty successful this season. And I, and I think one thing with that team, too, to look forward, uh, or not really to look forward to, but to look out for is their bats because you have two power, actually three powerful guys. You got Ethan Weiner, Mitchell Goodman, and Bryce uh, Zabadil. So all three of those guys have quite a bit of power. So um, At least in baseball, they've all shown out to hit yeah. the ball very far and very hard. So we're going to see how that. Um, we're just going to have to see how they do against wiffle yeah. balls and crazy breaks. And um, yeah. the last team is uh, Jumbo Shrimp. So uh, Jumbo Shrimp. I don't even know where to start with these guys. That's, that's um, an interesting team. We actually, you know, we've only seen, you know, the captain play for the Jumbo Shrimp. Because technically, you know, the guys that, were, that played for the Jumbo Shrimp in the first week of preseason, was at, they're actually now on the Biscuits. So, uh, Joe Grandal, um, absolutely horrible pitcher. Joseph Grandal came here. Yep. What, what is what is honestly going on? Cannot find the strike zone worth a crap. Well, we'll we'll uh, say this. We'll say this. Joe Grandal, um, he doesn't bring it in athletic ability as much as other guys, but he brings it in baseball and IQ and try hustle and effort. And he, he I'm trying. <laughs> wiffle ball IQ. And so he. No, 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 I'm just saying. No, yeah, he funny, he <laughs> brings himself to the game and he shows up and he works and that's kind of something you have to yeah. take in for. I mean, his he's dedication's there. Awesome. Yeah, he's I dedicated. He's ready for ready for game. Even though his his smarts might, he thinks he's doing the right stuff sometimes, and sometimes it's gonna slide through. Like for an example, it didn't this time. But um, against the Yargos, you guys didn't see this game. We're still trying to upload that one. But um, we hit the ball. I think Brett hit the ball to the wall, and it was gonna be easy triple or grand slam. 
and Joe throws it over the back ball, thinking it's going to be a ground rule double. Yeah, no, yeah. That's he not faked really... a ground rule double. Um, well, that's I mean, not it how it actually works. was. He he faked the he actually faked the <laughs> grand slam. He he shot the ball over the fence really quick. Yeah, that's not how it works. We all saw it. So um, yeah, instead of the camera. But yeah, um, it's going to be stuff like that. That's going to bring him, you know, in the game and make it, if anything, a close game against the uh, the lower teams. So. Uh, I mean, honestly, oh yeah, and the, you know the Wiffle Weekly Player of the Week. Uh, I gotta give it to Garrett Lampert. He um, just had just astonishing just pitching performances. It was insane. And he had you know multi home run games. Probably, I think he has the most home runs in the league right now. If it's not Seth Brown, I think he has three. Yeah, yeah. So um, we got, we gotta give it to him for that. Um, yeah, for sure. His pitching ability the week as he has shown is to be elite um, throughout the league, and his hitting ability also against some good solid pitching is going to be very powerful and very strong. Also, we got to give a shout out to Garrett Closer with two grand slams this yeah, week. Sure. You guys got to watch that game. That one's a that one's a good one. Um, that was actually the closest one of the week. Uh, not going to spoil it. I guess we already spoiled it in the start of the video. So that's all we got for Wiffle Weekly this week. Um, so yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Help us support. Uh, you know, we we are thankful. We you know, 104 subscribers doesn't sound like a lot, but it means a lot to us and. Uh, yeah, we thank all 104 of you, and uh, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe to show your support. It means a lot to all of us, and uh, yeah, thank you very much. And here's Ethan, Ethan Widener Ethan from the Lumber Kings. Kings Ethan Widener. I'm, I'm just a boss. All right, we're going to do a quick interview at the end. Welcome back. We're here with Ethan Widener. That's me. From the Lumber Kings. Um, Ethan, how do you feel the season will go for the Lumber Kings we're, we're, and, we're and yourself? No, no. I'm going to stop you right there. We're just going to win. We, we are not going to lose. Okay. Everyone on our team is insane. So how do you feel about the pitching challenges that you will face against There's the other no teams? Pitching challenges. I'm I'm the best. I'm, they're they're bad. Like, okay, don't question. Come on. Stop. Stop. <laughs> okay. So clearly we have a lot of confidence from the lumber. No, like, get out no. of here. Stop. Clearly we have a lot of confidence from the lumber. It's not teams. confidence. It's truth. <laughs> so <laughs> players, come on. So I got to go back to practice. Arrogance, and he's very. Ignorant, and here we Ignorant go. Milton. Ethan, how many home runs do you expect to hit this year? Yeah. Reasonably. I don't know. How many games are we playing? At least two. <laughs> how many games do we play? Uh, regular season, it's 18. 18 games. But you can play a most of 19 uh, if you lose in the first round of the postseason. Multiple, two, maybe three a game. Three a game, he's saying. So that would equal out to uh, 67. Probably not right, but we're going to put it that right. That sounds right. like MLB The Show's Road to the Show. <laughs> where you hit yeah. multi home runs. Yeah, it's not. It's not. Uh, I don't think that's possible, folks. I don't think he's gonna do that, but we'll like to see it, and that'd be a great video to watch. So, Ethan, thank you for your time. Honestly, honestly, it depends on who's pitching. Garrett Lampert's pitching. I'm done. Game. He says four. So that was a good one, and uh, we'll catch you later, guys. Thank you for watching. Interview done.